Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 17 in the book of First Peter. I'm going to title today, Return to the Shepherd. We're going to tie a bow over an Old Testament to a New Testament concept. Um, here's the passage for today. This is from First Peter chapter 2, the last two verses of First Peter chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. It's talking about Jesus and him doing suffering right. Verse 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseers of your souls. So you may recall, uh, this is from Isaiah 53, by his wounds you have been healed, but wait, there's more. That's Isaiah 53, 53, 5. But 53, 6 is in there with a little bit of a modification, a completion of the New Testament. I can't wait to share it with you. All right, let's start with the beginning of the passage. He bore our sins. It's amazing that this works, that this counts, that the spiritual math turns out. Where does he bear, uh, bear our sins? Well, it's in his body. So he uses the vehicle of him coming down. It reminds me of the passage in Philippians 2 9 though he was in the form of God he didn't count equality with God a thing to be grasped but made himself nothing taking on the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross and that's what we're talking about here at the tree he himself bore our sins on his body in his body on the trees same same concept so his body became a sin vehicle. Well, whose sin? Well, this is the part that gets a little nasty, which is our sin, which is a nice way of saying my sin. It's so, it's so much easier to do this Christianity thing and think that Jesus died for the sins of the world or somebody else's sin or specifically anybody but who's not me. So step back with me, and there's a lot to swallow here. There's a lot to understand and agree with. Now, he uh, earlier in chapter 2, he described himself as the stumbling stone. So Jesus gets our attention here by the crazy stuff he does, the otherworldly stuff that he does. So if if you're stumbling here today, don't stop. Keep going. So to those to who believe, there's actually a purpose to all this, that we may die to sin and that we might live to righteousness. Let's talk about dying to sin. So his death is supposed to have an effect Yes, there's an effect then, payment satisfaction for sin. But the effect that he's talking about here is the effect is supposed to be now. This is a, a now part. Uh, so it's not just the spiritual misaccounting that he's going to do that's going to fall in our favor at the end of the age. It's the now part. It's to help me now with sin, with my tongue, with my eye, with my zipper, with my hands and with my head. It's to help me stop doing things, that's the die to sin, and start doing things, that's the living to righteousness. So, yes, it's kind of like gardening. To make a beautiful garden, you're going to have to kill a few things. But on the other hand, you're supposed to foster and plant and grow and water. That's the living to righteousness a part of it. Living to righteousness, righteousness is, is to cause to be in right relationship and then conform in right behavior. So getting it right with God in relationship and then getting the activities right after that. So he did what he did, boring our sins on the cross so that to change things. Change things then, but for here today, change things now. All right, so let's get to, let's get to this Isaiah 53 quote. By his wounds you have been healed. First of all, we got to talk about what a wound is. So the wound all has to do with blood, either blood under the skin or blood outside of the skin. So uh, the word is translated as a welt or a bruise or a blood clot. Those are all definitions that talk about bleeding under the skin and then the stripes and the wounds. And those are those are the blood where blood is spilt outside the skins. So by his wounds, by his stripes, all these definitions have to do with the blood. So that's kind of a, uh, a little cool little bonus here for today. 
uh, by his wounds you have been healed or cured or restored or renewed. It's so personal. It's by his wounds you have. So here's where we get. This is not the sins of the world. This is the, the, the personal side of this, the specificity of this exchange and the specificity of the greatest great exchange. So I have to read from Isaiah 53 because this is where this comes from. Isaiah 53, verse 3. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And here it is. And with his stripes, we are healed. And then you got to go to verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astrained. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that's where it kind of ends as far as the, how does this turn out? In, in Isaiah 53, incompletely. But in, in verse, uh, in back, now back to First Peter, in verse 25, I never knew this before. For you were straying like sheep, but now, but have returned now to return to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So First Peter, chapter 2, verse 25, completes Isaiah uh, 53, verse 6. But now you have returned to the shepherd of your soul. So the Old Testament fabulously points to Jesus, and the New Testament is the fulfillment of this. And specifically here, we have the, sto- the story of the slain, slain sacrifice in Isaiah 53, the scattered sheep in Isaiah 53, the astray in Isaiah 53. But now the, 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 the people who have scattered, the sheep that have scattered, are home. They have returned. The New Testament completes our understanding, and the scattered have now returned to the shepherd. So we have this uh, a power of the resurrection that now is complete, and now we see from like the, the day of the crucifixion with the, with the apostles all being scattered. Now we find them almost as if it's the morning of the resurrection. Now we return to the shepherd. Return with me. Trust him. Thanks for listening.